Christmas Collaboration by Music Summary Draco has no idea what to get her money for Christmas without spending money. Rose and Scorpius have ideas. A Germani fanfiction. Maybe this will work. Draco mumbled, carefully examining a blown glass cat curled on a velvet cushion. Not too expensive. Dad! Scorpius sighed beside him and held up the discreet price tag on a ribbon around the cat's front paw. Not too expensive if you're one of us. That's too weak salary for most people. Draco wrinkled his nose. What do you suggest, then? We've looked in 14 shops so far today, and you've put the veto on everything I've picked. No clothes, no jewellery, no decorations. Definitely no makeup or hair for Paris. Can't even go with my usual fallback. She won't let me get her any more books until she goes through the library at the manor. What am I supposed to do? Stop thinking that money is going to solve all your problems? Draco laughed under his breath. Oh, I'm a Malfoy. It's my first instinct. He clapped Scorpius on the shoulder. All right, no more looking in shops for something to buy. Not right now, at least. Let's get something to drink. Scorpius looked hopeful. Can we go to... Don't even think it. She'd kill me if I took you into a pub and don't think a dozen people wouldn't report on us the second we were spotted. Draco looked around as if they might be overheard, then leaned down towards his son's ears. We'll go to the club. She never has to know. So how did it go? The man leaned over the back of the chair and kissed the top of Scorpius' head. Any success? Scorpius groaned and flicked at the wing of the toy snudge on the table in front of him. It spun around, weighing quietly. No, he muttered. Complete failure. You're going to have to divorce him. It's the only solution. Laughing, Hermione took a seat across the table. She snagged a heavily frosted cookie from the plate. It's not that hard, Scorpius. Just don't let him buy anything from me. I don't want something from a shop. Scorpius made a face, lifting one eyebrow at her in disbelief. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to keep Draco Malfoy from spending money? I thought he was going to have a heart attack by the time we had it home. He didn't buy anything and it was killing him. Only charge slip he signed the entire day was at the club. Hermione passed with the cookie an inch from her mouth. Scorpius winced. Yeah, forget that. Hermione slowly shook her head, then shoved the whole cookie into her mouth and chewed loudly, staring Scorpius in the eyes the entire time. Scorpius slapped his hands over his ears. Fine, fine, you monster, I'll talk. Grinning, Hermione swallowed the rest of the cookie. She propped her chin in her hand and blinked innocently at Scorpius. He gave another sigh and slumped in the chair. Hey, you took me to the club. Yes, I had a drink. Uh, whiskey sour. Just one, though. And it was mostly juice anyway. Half whiskey, half juice. He flicked a glance at her mind and shrugged. All right, there was a little juice in it, but Dad had at least two snifters of brandy. Your father's in his forty, Scorpius. If he wants a hangover in the morning, that's his decision. Then either of you have something to eat, at least. Sausage rolls and bacon butties. Oh, very healthy. According to Dad, the club is where men go to avoid all healthy foods their wives want them to eat. Hermione huffed. Oh, just saying, Scorpius muttered. Hermione pinched a bridge of her nose and shook her head. Letting that go, she said, and blatantly changing the subject. Did you find anything for that young woman you were telling me about, Miss Montgomery? Aline? A faint pink blush started to spread across Scorpius' cheeks. Oh, you didn't. That is, I, she's not. Scorpius, Hermione smiled at him. You've mentioned her a minimum of once a day since you came home for Christmas break. You're a very bright young man, but you and your father have more than your looks in common. You're both absolutely incapable of hiding how you feel about a pretty girl. Have you asked her out yet? Scorpius made a fade. That's not how it is. Hermione laughed quietly. Oh, no, of course not. I clearly misunderstood the fact that you talk about her all the time and that you happen to know her favorite color flower, musician book, and holiday spot. I don't know her favorite holiday spot. Hermione gave an impish smile. But you do know the rest. Fine, Scorpius mumbled. He reached across the table and pulled a plate of cookies to him. So I like her. What about it? That's the wrong question. What you should be asking is, what am I going to do about it? And I can help you there. Scorpius snapped the antlers of a reindeer cookie and ate them. He lifted one shoulder in a shrug. I can, because that's another thing you have in common with your father. You're hopeless at showing, said pretty girl, how you feel. Fortunately, there is a holiday coming up very soon that involves handing over evidence of your feelings. Hermione sat up straight 
and pulled a bureau out of her hair. She opened a pocket notebook and poised a pen over it. Gift ideas, go! So, how did it go? Draco asked, folding his dressing gown and laying it across the bench at the foot of the bed. Did Scorpius actually admit to liking Miss Montgomery? Her name is Aline, Hermione said as she set her book aside. Her favourite colour is lilac, her favourite flower is hydrangea, and her favourite legend is the story of King Arthur. She loves rainstorm sunsets and Cornwall. She flashed Draco grin. But Scorpius barely knows her. Oh, obviously, Draco drawled. He tossed a decorative pillow to the end of the bed and set it in, drawing the sheet up to his ribs before leaning over to press a kiss on Hermione's cheek. What is he planning to buy her for Christmas? Hermione half. Malfoys, all alike. Think with their vaults. She turned to nestle against his side, head on his shoulder. It took some work, but I think I talked him out of buying something. That's exactly what everyone expects him to do. If he wants to impress the young lady, he needs to do precisely the opposite. Not throwing money at her. Draco, idly drawing random patterns on the back of her neck, paused for a moment before resuming much more slowly. Nothing, he asked in a low voice. Why, nothing at all. The man shook her head. Of course not. Christmas isn't about the most expensive present. It's about the most thoughtful one. She wants something that shows he really put consideration into what she likes. And I, that is, he can't put consideration into a gift that he buys. Draco twisted one of her curls around his fingers. What if it's something she really likes, but, oh, say it's something she's always refused to buy for herself. Something she looks at every time she passes it in a shop. What if he got that for her? Hermione yawned and put her arm across his waist. Well, maybe it will... She yawned again, closing her eyes. We show that he was paying attention, I suppose, she said drowsily. Give me an example, Draco said. What might something like that look like for you? Hermione snored. Nearly had it, Scorpio said to Rose over cups of mulled cider. Nearly had convinced her to tell me what she wanted from Dad, but he kept changing the subject to what Eileen might want from me. Rose groaned, dropping her head onto the table. You know, she said, voice muffled through her hair. For someone who's smart, Mum can be a real pygmy puff sometimes. Scorpio snorted and stirred a cider with a cinnamon stick. She did give me a couple of ideas. Basically, she said, what a girl. Woman? Woman wants us something special. Rose lifted her head and gave him a long look through her hair. Well, obviously, Scorpio said, but I mean something that couldn't come from anyone else. So, no buying anything from a shop? Not even if it's custom made and one of a kind? Hint, hint, Malfoys who can afford to get anything commissioned that they please. Scorpio sighed. Yeah, sort of. I swear, I tried a dozen different ways to get Hermione to tell me what she might think would qualify as special and unique and all that, but she kept turning the conversation on me. I had to pretend I had no idea what to get Arlene. Rose sat up and scrubbed her hair into place. What are you getting her anyway? They taught me how to do origami years ago. I'm making Arlene a bouquet of flowers, all in lavender and lilac, giving them to her at Tintagel at sunset. He grinned. If I get lucky, we'll get caught in a rainstorm. Cornwall in December? You have a good shot at that. Don't I know it? He leaned back on his chair, scrubbing at his chin with his knuckles. That issue's solved, at least. I still have no idea what to tell Dad. The origami idea doesn't seem bad. Mum might like that. Otters, if he can make them. Scorpius shook his head. Not unique enough. Dad makes little animals all the time. They're all over the manor can barely turn around without tripping over some paper elephant or unicorn. Rose idly tapped her spoon on the table. She looked at Scorpius, her mouth twisting. Well, she drawled and looked away. I, um, might have an idea. But your dad's not going to like it. Won't go for it. Don't even know why I'm bringing it up. Because my darling stepsister lives to torment me, proving her earned inheritance of the Weasley name. Well, duh. She tapped her spoon faster than met his eyes. It does involve buying something, but Mum's not going to mind. Trust me on this. First, you'll need to go to Gringotts. This is ridiculous, Scorpius. I look like a fool. Draco stood in front of the mirror, nose wrinkled at his reflection. Rose swears she'll love it, Scorpius said from his sprawl in a nearby chair, playing with a cheap mobile phone. Said she'll be ecstatic, new realms of pleasure, shriek of delight. Draco half-turned, staring at his son with one eyebrow raised. 
Has Rose been reading Roman novels again? I'm extemporizing. You're spending too much time with Hermione. That's what you're doing. Draco turned back to the mirror. Starting to sound like a dictionary herself. And Rose kicked James Potter's ass at Quidditch. She's starting to be like you. He grinned toothily, eyes wide in a parody of innocence. Blended families are keen, aren't they? I knew I should never have taught you to speak. Draco tipped his head back and forth, then finally sighed. Are you absolutely sure this qualifies for Hermione's Christmas gift? It doesn't seem special enough. Thoughtful and memorable, those were her specifications. Trust me, Dad. Scorpius stood, clapping Draco on one shoulder. In the mirror, they were nearly identical set. Scorpius just a touch shorter than his father. Scorpius smiled and reached up to make bunny ears behind Draco's head as he took a picture. She'll love it. Hermione, Scorpius and Rose sat in the cosy sitting room, surrounded by piles of paper and ribbon. Rose was already deep into a Quidditch tactics manual. Scorpius was rearranging the contents of a potion brewing set. Hermione smiled at her two and sipped at a cup of breakfast tea, one hand absently stroking the nap of a warm winter cloak beside her. She glanced at the clock on the mantel when it chimed. Good heavens, she said, eyes widening. Your father's been gone for nearly half an hour. I should check on him. Scorpius exchanged a look with Rose. No, they said simultaneously. He's fine. Hermione blinked, eyes narrowing. She looked at each of them in turn. What's going on? Rose and Scorpius held a quick, silent conversation in expressive eye movements and hand gestures. Finally, Scorpius sighed. You win, he muttered. He sat straight up and looked at Hermione. That's getting a present together. Hermione touched her neck and the delicate chain of the necklace she'd opened that morning. But I thought this was my present from him, she said. Scorpius shook his head. Nope, that was a present. He has another one. The present? You know, the unique special thing that proves he's been paying attention. Yeah, Rose added, closing her new book. This thing, the thing with the, you know? Hermione stared. That was remarkably unhelpful. Thank you, children. There was a soft knock at the door, and Draco's voice came through. Is she ready? Draco, what's going on? Hermione called. He pushed open the door and stepped through, stopping in the middle of the room. For you, he said, gesturing to himself. Hermione stared and stared a little longer, and kept staring. Her mouth opened and closed, but no sounds emerged. Scorpius and Rose exchanged a low five. Draco stood there wearing black. Nothing unusual in that. It was the items themselves, the ones Scorpius and Rose had decided would send Hermione reeling. Black athletic shoes, black jeans, and a black t-shirt. Muggle clothes. He looked at Hermione, his eyes worried. This isn't right, is it? He said in a resigned voice. I look like a fool, and I still ended up spending money. I'm sorry, Hermione, I try. The words were cut off with a squeak when Hermione leapt out of her chair and across the room, nearly tackling Draco in the hug. They went down in a tangle of limbs. Scorpius tucked the coffee table out of the way. Rose put a screen in front of the fireplace, ignoring the sounds of kissing, and muttered, Oh my god, and thought you'd like. They left the room and closed the door. You know, they're going to be shagging on the carpet, Rose said, her nose wrinkling. Like that's anything new. They stared at each other for a moment, then burst out laughing, jumping up and around in victorious dances. Congratulations, Santa's little helper, Scorpius said. Successful present. Helper? Rose said, hands on her hips. Excuse me, I was Santa. You were the helper. No, no, I provided the present, therefore Santa. After my idea, hence Santa. Affectionately bickering and shoving each other, the two headed for the kitchen, leaving Hermione and Draco to their private, muggle-style, very special and unique celebration. The End Thank you for listening to Christmas Collaboration by Music. If you would like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters and stories, you can follow me on YouTube, Spotify or AO3.